morning and welcome to our Sunday worship service. Today is the 14th of June, 2020. We are so honored to have you here with us today. And we want to welcome all those who are streaming live on Facebook and even on YouTube. Uh, for our members, the TCR members and the guests watching us from both within the country and around the globe. We want to begin our worship today uh, with a scripture from Psalms 145. Verses 1 to 7, and I read, I will exalt you, O God, my King. I will bless your name forever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your mighty act. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works. Men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts, and I will declare your greatness. They shall utter the memory of your great goodness and shall sing of your righteousness. This morning, we just want to focus our lives and our hearts on praising God for the many things that he has done. I know many circumstances come to our lives and we are unable to see the good. But as we sit back, even as scripture says, that we need to take back to our memory the wonderful things that God has done, and we should praise him. Our posture this morning is very important. It is our nonverbal communication to our God. You can kneel, which will symbolize humility. You can raise up your hands to, to show a sign of praise. You can dance as a sign of overwhelming joy. What is your posture today? What posture are you taking this morning, even as we begin to worship God? I would like to invite the worship team to come and join us and to take us through an, a time of praise and worship and giving thanks for the many things that he has done. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we want to thank you today for you have allowed us this beautiful Sunday morning to come before you to give you praise to speak of the many things that you have done. Lord, to go back into our minds and into our memories, to see and think of, of many things, Lord, that you have delivered us from, the protection that you have given us, the provision that you have provided for us, O oh God. So we praise and honor you. We lift up our hands in praise. Lord, we come with a posture of humility, Lord, to appreciate, Lord, everything that you have done for us. Be with us today, Lord, even as we go through this service, Lord, would you take us through it? Would we hear from you and hear from you afresh? We thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray, trusting and believing. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our wonderful service this morning. We would like to invite you to join us in our worship this wonderful morning. So wherever you are, we would like to you to be on your feet and rejoice with us. Praise the Lord with us because you're going to lift the praises to our God. So everybody just lift a praise to the Lord. Celebrate the name of the Lord this wonderful day. Come on, come on. Let me see you put your hands together. Turn it. Hallelujah. He is worthy of all praises. If you believe it, come on, just join us and say, come on, let me just say every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Oh, sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise. Every praise Come on, let's take it higher. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship, with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every 
Jesus! 
from the inside. Amen. May you delight in the inside, in the inside. Amen. Come feel my life from the inside, from the Set me on fire from the inside, from the inside of me. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be.
your hands and say, Lord, you are worthy. You are beautiful, Lord God. And we praise you, Lord. We love you for who you are, Lord. We love you for who you have been to us, oh God. We love you for who you have been to us, oh Lord. Through all these difficulties, Lord, you have stayed with us, oh God. And we love you, King of Kings. May you be glorified, Lord. May you be glorified. Lord, this is our prayer. That your name may be glorified in our lives, in our walk, in our talk, Lord, in our intentions, that your name may be glorified. So today we pray that our praises may be pleasant to you. Let it rise to you like a sweet perfume. Let our worship be acceptable. Let our presence, King of glory, bring the glory of the Lord in wherever places you're going. We commit ourselves to you, Jehovah Father. Let your glory be upon us. Let there be an open heaven in the days that are coming, King of glory. Let us walk according to your will, Jehovah Father. May you be the light and the lamp, King of glory, in our path in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, that you're ordering our steps. That, King of glory, we walk according according to the Holy Spirit that is speaking to us. We are crying out for the Spirit that searches the deep things of the Father and reveal them to us. Let it come and fill us from within. Fill us from within, Father, so that we may walk accordance to your will, Jehovah Lord. We bless your name for this service. We bless your name for each and every person who is listening and worshiping together with us from home. We pray whatever need they are having, King of glory, that you may stretch your right hand to them, King of glory. Bless them wherever they are. Meet their needs, King of glory, be there to to accompany them, Jehovah Father, even in this fellowship that we are having together. Thank you, Lord, for this time. We bless your name and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be glorified. Yes, Jesus. Good morning once again. My name is Shiko Mwangi. It's an honor to be your service host for the day. I am a member at Trinity Chapel Ruru and I am a ministry associate both with the Waridi Women's Ministry and even uh, with the service hosting team. And I'm delighted to have you on board with us today. Just a reminder of a couple of things that happen within the week. Um, on Tuesdays, we have our Tuesday prayer service, which begins from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. I hope we have gotten the tune of joining in for prayers. It's been an amazing time of praise and an amazing time of prayer. I hope you've also taken the opportunity to just send in your prayer requests so that we can pray and believe God together. Even as we pray, may you share your testimonies of what the Lord is doing. It will encourage the hearts of many that God is still in our midst and doing a great work within us. Then every Sunday from 10 a.m., please join us, those of us who have children, from 10 a.m. on YouTube for the children's service. Our pastors are also available on all the social media platforms. Uh, you can engage them via phone. The numbers are on your screen. Kindly reach out to them if you have any issue, any prayer need, any counseling need. They are there waiting to hear from you. Someone asked me, why do you serve? As I mentioned earlier, I am a ministry associate uh, serving under the Waridi Women's Ministry and also as part of the service hosting team that serves here in TCR. And I thought about it. And I realized primarily the reason why I serve is because the Bible says that to whom much is given, much is required. A lot has been given to me. I have life. I have good things that have been bestowed upon me. I have health. And because much has been given, the Lord requires a lot from me. I need to be in the space where I'm serving. I need to be in the space where I'm giving back. I need to be in the space where my life is not just zooming through the ears, but I'm in a place of impact, in a place of making sure that all the blessings that God have, has bestowed upon me are not just for me alone. And that's the reason why I serve. And I'd like to pose a challenge, is why do you serve? And where do you serve? Could you take the time 
to think about the things that God has given you? And could you think about ways in which you can give back to him as an appreciation for the life that he has given you, for the experiences and the joys that not many people have been able to get? And would you be able to shine your light so that many people would see the light of Christ and would be able to follow you? Think about it. If you're not in ministry and if you're not serving, look for an opportunity to serve. There are very many opportunities that are open to serve, even in this season. God has given us an opportunity to gather today in worship. And even as we come to get fed through the word of God, he also presents to us another opportunity for us to give through our giving. This is just the material things that God has blessed us with. It could be in the form of tithe, it could be in the form of offering, it could be in the form of just giving a thanksgiving unto the Lord. Now is our chance to give. And now on your screen, you'll see the pay bill number for which you might give, you can give. Please indicate on the account number the reason or the, the designated reason for your giving. Indicate tithe or offering, or if you're giving towards the Jirani Mwema project, please kindly ensure to indicate. Also, for the Jirani Mwema project, be sure to note that we are not only receiving the cash. If you have any things that you'd like to give, just contact the numbers on your screen and someone will give you directions on how you can be able to give. We have been going through a series titled Rebranded by our lead pastor, Reverend Steve Thule. The Lord is giving us a new opportunity today to hear again what he intends for us to learn in this season. I hope we are practicing what we are learning because it is not good for us to just hear and not be doers of the word. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we want to thank you this morning. We want to thank you that you never gather your people in vain. Thank you for this wonderful Sunday morning, Lord, that you have gathered us to hear from you. Lord, we pray that you'd begin to speak to our hearts afresh. We want to thank you that there are many, Lord, who could be in trouble and they need your help. We thank you that you're sending that help. We want to thank you that there are many who have celebrated and with joy the victorious things and wonderful things that you have done for them, oh God. We pray that we will rejoice with those. Lord, we want to thank you that, Lord, even as your word comes through, it's going to come to us fresh, that, Lord, you will lift us up. Lord, you will encourage us. You will build us up, oh God, and we will hear from you. We want to thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to fellowship with you. Holy Spirit of God, would you come? Would you be able to interpret the word of God into our hearts? Lord, customize the lessons towards us, Lord. Make them practical for us, oh God. We pray that you give us the zeal and the energy, Lord, to be the practical doers of your word, oh God, and not just hear us. We thank you that, Lord, even in this season, that, Lord, the word that comes through to us, Lord, will enable us to grow in you. We bless you and honor you this morning. We thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray, trusting and believing. Amen. Awesome. Trinity Chapel Roero, what's happening? I'm so excited to be bringing us God's word uh, this morning and in this service. We continue teaching from uh, First Peter and today we are going to do six verses from chapter 4. So verse 1 to 6, if you can be turning there. But thank you so much for joining us through this particular series called Rebranded. And what we have been talking about through uh, First Peter has been the practical things that Peter was teaching the Christians who had been scattered after believing in God and a great persecution had, been for, had befallen uh, the church of Jesus Christ and what it is that was going on during that time. So I'm very, very excited to be teaching uh, this morning. Let me sum up what I have been learning, okay? I, I hope you take some time to sum up what you have been learning, but let me, let me sum up what I have been learning. When we say we are rebranded, when I say I'm rebranded, my life is new. I am walking a new path. I am listening to a different drumbeat. I am in the world, but not of the world. I have chosen to revere Christ, to honor him. And because I honor him, he becomes Lord in my life. I submit to him, and in submitting to him, I live as a godly example in the community, in my workplace, at home, and even in the fellowship of believers. And in doing so, I reflect a certain life that is different from the life that is lived in the world. And so that's what I've been learning, and I hope that you've been learning uh, something through 
uh, this particular series. Today, I want to read verse 1 to 6 because that's what we're going to be sharing from. So if you can turn there with me, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1 to 6. Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude because he who has suffered in his body is done with sin. As a result, he does not live the rest of his earthly life for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans choose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. They think it strange that you do not plunge with them into the same flood of dissipation, and they heap abuse on you. But they will have to give account to him who is ready to judge who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was preached even to those who are now dead, so that they may be judged according to men in regard to the body, but live according to God in regard to the spirit. So imagine, today I only have two points or two lessons for us. I know, I know that's amazing, I know you're, you're shocked, but I only have two points that Peter talks about in these six verses that every believer must do to be able to live fully for Christ. And here they are. Number one, prepare for war. And number two, pursue God's will. So why don't we jump into the first one? Prepare for war. Verse one says, therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude because he who has suffered in his body is done with sin. Okay? The example is that Jesus Christ suffered in his body. But why? Why did he suffer in his body? To pay the price for our sin and also to purchase our freedom from sin. So we are told, arm yourselves with the same attitude. Have the same mindset about sin that the price has been paid, that your freedom has been purchased. And so you need to come out from under the power of sin, under the domination of sin, and so live a free life. Now, arming yourself means that you are preparing for war, as a military officer will do. So it, it means you get your mind into action. You, you prepare your mind for action. In fact, if you go back to chapter 1 of First Peter, verse 13, when Peter says, therefore prepare your minds for action because there is something that you are being called to do, you are being prepared for, so that you can go and take it on. Basically, if we are not ready and set, we will not resist sin. We will accept it. We will say, you know, come on, nimbaya, nimbaya. But you see, we have to set our minds and prepare ourselves. In fact, there is a text in Proverbs that says, as a man thinks, so is he. So you have to start sorting your thought life. Start with a mind set for action. Take an aggressive stand towards sin. Do not let it have power over you that you obey its desires. That is what the cross was about. And that's the example that we are given in Christ Jesus. Defeating the power of sin. So since Christ defeated the power of sin, make it count. Now that you're a believer, make the price that was paid for you count. Now, I, I, I was reading through this passage and, and, and thinking, there is a question within here. Are we able to fully overcome sin? As, as a believer living in this world, are we fully able to overcome sin? Yes, but not on this earth, Okay. It is when we shall be with our Savior forever and ever that we shall be totally free from the effect of sin and from the environment of sin. So why talk about it? Why talk about it if we are never going to be free until we meet Jesus? It's because we need to be committed as believers to understanding that we live in such an environment of sin and so we do everything that we can to keep from it then we will be living more free lives, free from being guided and powered by sin and the lusts of this life. In chapter 1, Peter says, we aim for holiness just as God is holy. But we live in a sinful world. So for us to resist, for us to, 
go against the current, we must actively put every effort to avoid sin and sinful environments. And though it may get to us in one way or the other, we are cleansed by God as we continue to actively live for him. See, when it rains, and I am supposing that the rainy season is starting to come to us, it is going to be muddy, whether it is little mud or a lot of mud. And chances are anyone who steps outside of a clean house is going to get some mud, is going to get some matope somewhere, okay? That, that's, that's, that's given. Now, we could choose to actively step into the mud, okay? Go for it. Play in it. Maybe even stay in the, in the mud. And I, I know for those of you who have little children, maybe you've had this experience where they'll just choose to go for the matope and just get dirty in it. So you, you, you could choose that. But a person who desires to stay clean actively prepares themselves. They, they wear gumboots or, uh, you know, boots, you know. Or maybe even carry an extra pair of, of, of shoes to, so that when they walk through the mud on the other side, they are going to change. They tuck in their pants into the boots and, and though they walk through the mud, though they walk through it, they will make effort to walk in sections that have less mud. So they, they know I am trying to keep clean. I am walking in this dirt that is existing, but I'm trying to keep clean in one way or the other. And then they actively cleanse themselves. They are set apart what is around the environment. They actively, though they live in the environment of the mud, they actively work towards making sure that they're not getting messed, messed up by that. So let me restate this. Prepare for war. It is an active choice. Prepare for war against sin. Note that verse 1 says, whoever suffers in his body is done with sin. In the active process of warring against sin, you will suffer just as our Lord suffered. But it is a positive thing because there is no better tool of dealing with our flesh or reading off the work of flesh than suffering. It will come with a cost. Getting rid of sin will come with a cost. Suffering makes us look to God more and more. So get active. James says in James chapter 4 verse 7, he says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. It is active. You resist. It says in Genesis 4, um, when Cain and Abel went before God to give an offering, and, and Abel, of course, gave an offering from the animals, and, and, and Cain gave an offering from what he had gathered from the crops. In verse 6, the Bible says, God came to Cain and spoke to Cain and told Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you. Another version will say it desires to master you, but you must rule over it. That's the thing. Sin is warring against you. It desires to have you. But you, my son, you, my daughter, must make the decision to actively resist it, to rule over it. Now, the, the Bible also teaches us that the way of the world is wide. Wide is a way in which sinners would walk. But the way of righteousness is narrow. And so you must make a choice to walk the narrow path actively. So what do you set in place to resist sin? Because resisting sin cannot be a motto or, or a banner or a life statement without a plan. Allow me to show you something from the book of Proverbs. It says in Proverbs chapter 4, Verse 23, it says, Above everything else, guard your heart, for it is a wellspring of life. Put away perversity from your mouth. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Make level paths for your feet and take only ways that are firm. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. Four things that will help you to resist sin. Here is a plan that will help you to resist sin and to prepare for war. It says, guard your heart. Protect your heart from taking in everything. Guard it because out of it 
flows the issues of life. So guard your heart. Don't, don't take it every emotion, every doubt, everything that is around you. Guard it so that you're shielding it from hearing or, or from perceiving or from engaging in everything and you're, uh, you're putting it in a place where it will absorb the, thing, the things that are godly and that are lovely and that, that are of righteousness. So protect your heart from just taking in everything. Number two, keep your mouth from perversity, the, the Bible says, from even corrupt talk. So here's a question. Where are your stories from? What are you listening to? Because the, your, 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 your mouth is a betrayer of what is within you. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, a man and a woman speaks. So what is within you? What are you saying? And what you're saying depends on what you're taking in. So where are your stories from? Lies, gossip, slander, insult. In fact, there are a lot of us who will end up using curse words because of the songs that we're listening to or because of the people we engage in. It's, it's sometimes even not by choice. It just comes naturally because of the environment where you have put your, yourself in. It says, keep your mouth from corrupt talk, from perversity. Number three, it says, let your eyes always look straight ahead. And here's a question. What are you watching? Because what you're watching will either cleanse your soul or corrupt your soul. What, what your, is your choices of movies and, 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 and shows? And which sites are you visiting? And what are you consuming? Because it's going to mess you up if you're not careful. Put a line on it so that you're able to protect and to guard yourselves. It says in verse 26 and 27, give careful thought to the path of your feet. Keep them steady. Be careful of where you go. So I started by saying, guard your heart. Guard yourself from taking everything. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Ask yourself, where are my stories from? Where am I getting my stuff from? It says, let your eyes look straight ahead. You ask yourself, what am I watching? Give careful thought to where your feet are going. So you have to ask yourself, where am I going? I cannot go to slippery places and then be surprised that I am sliding. Okay, it doesn't make sense. Now there is one more that I wanted to add. And this is it. What company am I keeping? Who are my friends? Who are those that are around me? Because they are going to either make me or break me. They, they say that we are the average of the five people closest to us. And so when I'm preparing myself, I also have to ask myself, who are my friends? Are they guiding me towards righteousness or leading me away from righteousness? Because if I'm going to prepare to fight against sin, then I have to be conscious about that also. So prepare for war with a plan. Guard your heart. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Give careful thought to the paths of your feet. Choose your company properly. In fact, it will say in 1 Corinthians that bad company will always corrupt good morals. So be very careful about that if you're going to prepare yourself for war. But there is a second thing that this text tells us about, and it is this. Pursue God's will. Pursue God's will. Do you see the active nature of this word? Prepare for war. Jihami, ili uhame. You, you can sense that. Now this one is saying pursue, follow after. This is a way of positively resisting sin. I'll never forget a day I was walking in town and I met a young man. Uh, told me years back, I met a young man and he told me, asked him how, how he's doing, how his relationship is and all this kind of stuff. And he told me, Pastor, you have to understand that when you guys talk to us, most of the time you're telling us what not to do. You're always speaking to us, don't do this, don't, 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 usitembe na hao, usitoke usiku. In fact, it reminds me of the song, Leo misi toki inje, Leo misi endi pare, Leo misi. Yeah, you remember that one? Okay, if you're old enough. Yeah. We, we keep talking to you about where not to go or where not to be. And his question was, do not just tell us what not to do. How about you tell us what 
to do so that we are not always avoiding we are now actively pursuing what is right and it became my goal to teach people what to do to do the positive and you when you do the positive you will find less time to do the negative when you test the relish when you have a relish for the righteousness of god you will le- lose the taste for the sinful and so peter says in verse 4 In verse 3, you do not live the rest of your earthly life for evil human desires, but rather for the will of, of God. Sorry, I correct that. Verse 2, as a result, he does not live the rest of his earthly life for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. You actively pursue the will of God. They have given up the lusts of this world and now they are living for God's will. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22, one of my best verses. I think it echoes the same drive. It says, flee from the evil desires of youth, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace alongside those who are calling on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. Pursue means seeking for something until... You get it. Persistently seeking. Seeking over a long period of time. Going after it. You see, pursuing is intentional. It is consistent. It lasts long. It is worth the goal. And the Bible tells us, pursue God's will. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. It says to us, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness. And all the other things shall come after you, shall be added unto you. Now that you are rebranded, don't you waste time in the previous life that you are living. Recover your time by pursuing God's will. We are given a list there in verse 3. For in your previous life, you spent enough time doing what pagans choose to do. You lived in debauchery and in lust and Drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable adultery. Now, debauchery, is, of course, is excessive indulgence, you know, in drunkenness, orgies, carousing, detestable adultery. And, and some of us will recognize one or two of these because in our previous life we are engaged in them. Others, by the way, might recognize all of them because in our previous life we might have been engaged in all of them. But now Christ has saved you. Do not go back to those things. Here, guys, living for God cannot coexist with living for lusts. I'm going to say that one more time. Living for God cannot coexist with living for lusts. They are not compatible. You see, one of the lies of this generation is the lie of accommodation. I want to accommodate You know, a little drinking. I want to accommodate a little orgy. I want to accommodate a little detestability or a little lie so that I am accepted and I do not look weird. But look at the text. The world should be surprised that you are no longer or you no longer join them in reckless and wild living. I love that. They think it's strange. In fact, In NIV it says that you do not plunge with them into the same flood of dissipation. You are not with them in the reckless and wild living. And by the way, funny story. The world does not think it's strange when you live such a reckless and wild life. They think it's strange when you live such a life and start living for God. When you trick drugs and wreck your body. They will tell you that is how life is nowadays. In fact, that is a way you might even be able to keep sanity in this COVID season. When you have a hangover, in fact, if you go to work with a hangover, they might go like, and you say, I have a hangover. You know, we've drunk like most of the night. And they'll say, oh, sawa, tunakuelewa, take this and the other. You come and you're looking sleepy, sleepy, and they ask you, where were you? And they said, you know, I spent the night in a kesha. They're like, why would you? Why? Why would you want to spend the night in a cash? What are you telling God the whole night? Doesn't he even understand, you know, the, 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 the longings of your heart? Why, why do you need that? 
The world looks at broken marriages. We don't even end up celebrating those ones that are working. We talk about the ones that are breaking. Accidents from drunk driving. Bars open and full during a restriction time and a lockdown season like this one. We, we reason it and we say, you know, it is people. They must quench their lust. They understand that. What they don't understand is when a life changes, when a liar becomes a truth teller, when a disorderly man starts making sense of their lives, when the drunkard becomes sober, when homes are restored, when the corrupt becomes straight, that they do not understand. And that is what we are called to, to change. And when you do change, they will heap abuse on you and they will start asking, you think you are better than us? Kwani, what has happened to you? And when they heap abuse on you, you might wonder whether you are right in serving God. And when you reach that point, the Bible says, when you wonder whether you are doing right to live for God, when they judge you, because some of us are being judged by others, the Bible says, be reminded of this in verse 5. They will have to give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. In fact, it continues to say, in verse 6, For this is the reason the gospel was preached even to those who are now dead, so that they might be judged according to men in regard to the body, but live according to God in regard to the spirit. The people who judge you on the outside are going to judge you according to the body. But there is one judge who will judge you if you live right according to the spirit. So don't worry about them. Let God deal with that. But you... Believer, live according to God's will. Live such a life that actively avoids sin and actively pursues God's will. And God's will is for us to be holy just as he is holy. The result of this is that your life will be so different that even those who mocked you, even those who abused you, who remember your past life, will ask the reason for why your life is so different and be drawn to the power of God. So let me close out. Actively live for God. Prepare for war against sin. Do not keep company that will corrupt you with sin or go to search or watch things that will lead you to sin or even participate in them. I love Psalm 1.1. 1, 1. I think it opens the Psalms very well. It says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit among the, uh, the seat of mockers. He is not taking in the substance of the sinners or the scoffers of the mockers. The Bible says his delight is somewhere else. It is in the law of the Lord and on it he pursues day and night until he knows what God's will is. And his life is different. So prepare for war against sin. You're not going to overcome if your mind is not set, if you don't plan around it, if you live your life, if you treat sin normally, it will treat your life abnormally. Did I, did I say, did you get it? If you treat sin, oh man, what about this revelation? If you treat sin normally, it will treat you abnormally. Everyone can get it. You too need to get it. That you have to prepare for war against sin. But don't just prepare for war. Don't be fighting sin all the time. Actively pursue God's will because there you will find so much joy that you will no longer miss your past life. You'll be mocked for it, but you'll be better off for it. I want to pray for Someone who's telling God, you know, I want to actively do this. I want to resist the enemy. I don't want mastery or sin over my life anymore. And you want God to free you. Why, why don't I pray for you at this particular moment? Father, thank you for your word. I thank you that we are encouraged to the fact that those of us who suffer in the body will have finished with sin. I pray that you'll bring us to that moment where we will actively, actively engage and put a plan around our lives that 
curves away from sin and the environment and the effect of sin. And though we might be in this world, we are actively fighting. We are actively preparing for war. And even when that is said and done, we will find the joy of pursuing God's will. I love that your word tells us that we seek you first and your kingdom. And all these things shall be added unto us. May we find the joy of salvation. Renew in us the joy of salvation. So that in the pursuit of the joy of salvation, we'll be able to see the goodness of God. We'll be able to know the favor of God. We'll be able to long for God. As the deer panted for, for streams of living water, we will go for them. And we will find the joy of the Lord. We'll actively pursue God's will. And in pursuing God's will, we are going to live for you differently. Rebranded differently for the glory and honor of God's name. And so I ask Lord God for some of us who are under the power of sin and under the hold of sin, yet Christ said at the cross that it is finished. May you remove them from that power and from that hold and from that uh, bondage and slavery. And may they find true freedom and freedom in Christ Jesus. For those who know the truth are free even indeed. And may they come out of it and live freely by pursuing God even in their lives for the glory and honor of your name. May we accept this truth. May we know it in our lives. May we actively live it. And in living it, may we be forever changed. For we pray, trusting and believing in Jesus' matchless name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much again for joining us for this service. As we finish, allow me again to invite you to our social media handles for any updates or for any connection. Our Twitter handle, our Facebook handle, our Instagram uh, uh, handle. You can always go to any of those and get in touch uh, with us. Also, may I invite us continually to our Tuesday prayer service at 7 p.m. On, on Facebook. You can join us even as we get to minister to you on that. We also have a children's service on both Facebook and YouTube. And this service also on both Facebook and YouTube. And you can join us and get to fellowship with us. As our service leader said, at the bottom of the screen, there has been numbers running. Uh, for, for our office, you can contact one of us and we'll be able to get in touch with you and minister to you. May you have a blessed, victorious week as you walk in the freedom of God. Shall we say the words of benediction together? Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Go and live for God powerfully and freely. Amen.